Hello everybody, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of a poetry collection. This is Asking for Trouble by Tori Wag. I met Tori at um, Far Out Festival, Back to the Garden, so she did some poetry readings there. My band was playing there, and we both were out there um, selling books, so we did a little bit of a book swap. And uh, I picked up Asking for Trouble, so I'm going to read you the blurb. Then I'm going to go through, as I always do with poetry collections, I'm just going to read you the poems that I particularly enjoyed, because I think that's the best way to give you a feel for it. And we'll go from there, so... Dane reads. Uh, yet here she is, asking for trouble, acting like what she does might matter. Tory Wag. Asking for Trouble is a collection of poetry that explores living with a ragged heart while still being brave enough to face the world with hope. Empowering and emotionally raw, these are poems that celebrate femininity and inner strength. Uh, she also signed this to me, to Dane Love from Tory. Thank you, Tory. And it's dedicated to all the ragged hearts who are brave enough to keep beating, never stop asking for trouble. And I want to read you before I get started this about the author section, because this kind of uh, covers why there's all this stuff about the heart. So, Tori Wag is a writer living with her husband, two daughters, three dogs and her cat in Oxfordshire. She was born with two holes in her heart, which were fixed with open heart surgery when she was little, and with her heart on the wrong side, which wasn't. Asking for Trouble is her first collection of poetry. Uh, she's on Instagram, she's at torywag.com with two G's, T-O-R-I-W-A-G-G. -G. So, regrets. We never did grab that coffee. I stupidly assumed there were infinite opportunities. It didn't matter if I put it off till next month, when the diary would be a little freer. Living life as if death wasn't just there, around the corner. That morbid gift, our earthly reminder to find time for one another. I love as well the fact that most of this, not all of this, but most of this is free verse poetry and I really like free verse poetry. Okay, so this one is called Please Eat and I just thought this one was very moving. These are words I'm not allowed to say. I know it's complicated and there's a process and it's not about the food really. But I don't know how to stand by and watch the kindest of hearts that burst out with love and laughter and a little naughtiness from the first day I saw you play together, turn quiet and sad, shrink back against the walls. I want you to know the joy of a meal with friends again, of feeling strong, of running for the bus, of eating without counting. I want you to hug without timidity. I want you to eat. Please eat. This is Key's phone mask and I thought this was quite interesting. She mentioned when I was chatting to her um, that um, a lot of this, she started writing basically during Covid and this is a great example of that. Key's phone mask. I pat my pockets, check my bag. Extraordinary how fast the unfathomable becomes the everyday. Our incredible adaptability to the most inhospitable of conditions. Thank God we're fast to learn. We're going to need that where we're heading. This one's called Frozen Shoulder and I relate to this because I'm getting older. Tonight I hit a wall of despondency. Energy trickled from my feet, my rigid neck held in a crick for a week, finally locked itself in place and whispered, enough. I have tried with gentle persuasion, a spasm, a pull, a soft, consistent ache to remind you to pause, to breathe, to stretch. I bellowed unexpectedly in the middle of the night. I shook you awake with a searing stab across your shoulder blade. You gasped, clenched teeth and rearranged the pillows. I made your eyes water in pain, stopped you from pulling on a jumper, reaching for the seatbelt, turning to check for traffic, and still you persisted. One more hour at the desk, another email, a quick message, an early start, a late night at the screen. You would not listen. You will not learn. So the lesson becomes a message. You cannot outrun your own body. You are not invincible. This life will kill you if you don't make changes. And tomorrow, I will make you rest. I will get your attention the only way I know how. There will be great pain and I shall not blink. I shall not let up. Because we both share that pig-headed stubbornness that gets us into this mess. Don't let it get too late to change. This is racing to the top and this is about the pressure to have everything now. Um, which I feel. I've been running behind since that essay for English missed the deadline in the fourth year. Age 14 and worn down to my tired bones. Charcoal smudges for eye sockets, too wired to take an early night, a reset, make a plea for mercy. And who would have listened if we had? Faking sickness to win a double period in a quiet sanatorium. Two aspirins and all the weight of the world lifted for one hour of stolen daytime sleep. But the list never shortened. Relief was brief and the drive, the achieving, the certificates, prizes, grades and accolades kept needing to be won. Jaw tightened, shoulders rounded, ribs contracted to protect that soft little heart. Because there's no space for hurt feelings when you're racing to the top. And finally this is self-reflection, which is a nice little one to end on. A few careful words leave me chastened. They hand me a mirror. 
a reflection of a frivolous life of froth and first world problems. Hours spent caring about crow's feet, silvering hair, a less than bikini body whilst whisking through another day of glossy invitations, chinking crystal and pouting over the lack of a long haul holiday this year. Breathless from the world, dizzy with busyness, collecting compliments and air kisses like trophies for a pointless life that leaves not a whisper of a scratch in the dirt. A play pretend existence with a safety net, knitted so strongly of privilege that it makes a mockery of the panic attack nights, the cascades of cortisol, the indulgence of therapy. So yeah, Asking for Trouble by uh, Tory Wag. There were some rhyming poems in it. Uh, as you can tell, <laughs> I don't like rhyming poetry, so I just didn't tab them out because they didn't really speak to me as much. But I did really enjoy this collection. I'd give it a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5, and I'm also looking forward to... Well, Tory's got another book coming out soon, and she's hopefully coming on my radio show as well, so I'm looking forward to both of those. So there we have it. That's what I made of Asking for Trouble by Tory Wag. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this biggie. Hit that subscribe button for more, and me and Biggie, we will see you soon for another bookish video, won't we Biggie? Thanks a lot. Bye bye.